the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in a gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. It's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, starring Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, the paper's ace reporter. And in the town of Hillsdale this evening, all is exceptionally calm and quiet. Even George Harvey. And that is exceptional. Beautiful moon tonight, George. Yeah. Something about a full moon, I always say. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so... so... George, are you listening to me at all? Hmm? Oh, oh, sure, Susan, of course. Oh, you haven't said a word for ten minutes. You keep looking around, like you were on the trail of a criminal or something. Funny you should say that. Susan, this may come as a big surprise to you, but Hillsdale is in the midst of a serious crime wave. Crime wave. A serious crime wave led by the mysterious and dangerous society burglar and his gang. And you're on the lookout to capture him. Well, I'm keeping my eyes open, yes. Oh, George, just because there have been a few burglaries in town and you build it up in the paper as the work of a society band, it's no reason that you... Shh. What's the matter? Over there, in those bushes. I saw something move. You sure? You stay here, Susan. I'm going after him. Probably the society burglar. Oh, don't be foolish, George. He may have a gun or a blackjack or I'll something. take him by surprise. George Harvey, come back here. I've got nothing to worry about. All crooks are cowards. Everyone knows that. I just hope he knows it. Well, here goes. All right, give up. My men have got you surrounded. Give up before I... Get off my back. Sammy! You! Sure. What are you doing here? Don't shoot, Mr. Harvey. I'll go quietly. Are you all right, George? Did he get... Sammy! Hi, Miss Armstrong. Oh, well, I take it you're not the society burglar, Sammy. It was Sammy. a perfectly natural mistake, Susan. You see, Miss Armstrong, Mr. Harvey, I was watching my girl's house. She lives right over there. It's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> Is there any particular reason for watching her house, Sammy? I suspect her of being unfaithful. Surely. You're spying on her? Oh, I trust her implicitly, until proven otherwise. Now, that's what I'm here for, to prove otherwise. Well, just don't stay up late, Sammy. Come on, George, come on. Let's look for some more bandits. I resent your tone, Susan. Thanks for capturing me, Mr. Harvey. I was getting bored. No, any time, Sammy, any time. The society bird. Well, it could have been. <laughs> Except that it was Sammy. That's the dangerous thing about this type of criminal, Susan. He might be anyone. Walking the streets of the city, a respected citizen, and, and only turning to crime at night. You know, he sounds interesting. Now, let's not start defending crime, Susan. But you said yourself it just might be someone I know. You don't know him, Susan. You're not, you're not shielding him. Uh, George, you've guessed my guilty secret. This isn't a joking matter, Susan. If, if you have information, it's your duty to give it to the police. Even if I'm uh, interested in it? Susan! No. No, I refuse to be drawn into a discussion of this nature. I, I know that you're not serious, Susan. You, you couldn't be. <laughs> well, of course not. Well, naturally, I knew it all along. Uh, well, shall we consider the matter closed? Yes. Good. Uh, George. Hmm? You don't think there's any danger of the police capturing him, do you? Susan! <laughs> Morning, patient. Morning, Miss Susan. I um, heard you and Mr. Harvey come home last night. He sounded a little bothered about something. Oh, well, I'm afraid that was my fault, patient. I was leading George on, pretending to have a secret romance with a society burglar. Well, that's one way of getting a mink coat. <laughs> oh, well, I'll apologize to George when I go down to paper this morning. Why apologize? Let him suffer a while. A little mysterious competition never hurt any man. No, I don't think I could keep it up, Patience. 
Just an idea, Miss Susan. Oh, he'll have forgotten all about it anyway by this morning. I guess you're right. When I walk into the office, he'll be his old complacent self, grinning at me with that self-satisfied look of his. Sometimes he irritates me so. He can be so smug. Patience. You're right. I'll do it. He deserves to suffer. Mr. Harvey. Yes, Sammy? Uh, Don't expect too much out of me today. Your spy activities kept you up late, I take it. Yeah, but it turned out very well. Uh, You found out your girl wasn't too timing you. Oh, she definitely was. I accused her of it, and she was so happy to find out I was jealous that we had a very tender reconciliation. Feminine psychology. Uh, yes. Mm. Anytime you want me to check up on Miss Armstrong, I'll be glad to offer my services. Well, that's big of you, Sammy, but I hardly think there's any need. Uh, Miss Armstrong has no other uh, romantic interest. (laughs) She's a woman, isn't she? And where there's smoke, there's fire. Come to think of it, Sammy, last night we were talking about... Uh... Morning, George. Oh. How are you, Sammy? Hi, Miss Armstrong. And uh, how are you this morning, Susan? Oh, I feel just fine, George. Good. Anything new on the um, society burglar this morning? Not a thing, Miss Armstrong. I guess he took the night off last night. Well, I don't know that I'd say that. I mean... You wouldn't say what, Susan? Oh, uh, nothing, George. Nothing. Nothing? Susan, you just can't toss off statements like that and then pass them off as nothing. I, I demand to know what you mean. I told you, George, nothing at all. Susan, you, did, you didn't meet this Raffles. Meet him? How could I? Well, how should I know? But if you think for one minute I'm going to sit back and... You but... said yourself, George, I couldn't possibly be involved with such a character. But I... And you're never wrong, are you? Well, no, but... So there's nothing at all to worry about. I'll be in my office, Sammy. Sure, Miss Armstrong. What do you think, Sammy? Where there's smoke, there's fire, Mr. Harvey. Sammy, how much would you charge for just uh, keeping an eye on Miss Armstrong? Oh, I couldn't do it myself, Mr. Harvey. She'd spot me. Uh, That's true, true. And neither could my girlfriend, Shirley. Miss Armstrong knows her. Yeah. But my girlfriend has a girlfriend, and she could report back to Shirley, and Shirley would report back to me. Then I'd report to you. Uh, You know best, Sammy, but uh, why can't your girlfriend's girlfriend report directly to you? Shirley wouldn't trust either one of us. Yeah. It's a pretty grim situation, isn't it, Sammy? This battle of the sexes. It's a jungle, Mr. Harvey. But don't worry. I'll guide you safely through. Somehow I'd be much happier with Sabu. Susan, before we go another step, I demand to know... No, what, George? Don't play the innocent, Susan. I've been asking you all evening. Are you or are you not getting yourself involved with a crook? George, you mean you've turned to a life of crime? I'm not talking about myself, and you know it. Some other crook? Yes. Uh, no. I I demand to know, Susan, for your own good, are you or are you not... Oh, look. We're right outside Young's Jewelry Store. Don't they have the most beautiful display of rings you've ever seen, George? I'm not the slightest bit interested in rings, Susan. That's hardly a news item. I'll ignore that. Susan, I have the right to an answer, and if you persist in sidestepping the question... Excuse me. I guess I wasn't looking where I was... Oh! uh, Excuse me! What got into her? Don't try to change the subject, Susan. I wasn't, George. All I said was... For your own good, Susan, I demand an answer. Are you or are you No! What? I said no. Satisfied? Well, yes. I, I guess so. Good. And if I hear so much as another word on this subject, George Harvey... Susan, the whole episode is closed. Completely. You have my word on it. Hello? Shirley? Imogene. Oh, Shirley, wait till you're here. I saw her. With him. Who? Miss Armstrong. You know, I told you I knew her, but she doesn't know me. Well, she was with him, Shirley. Imogene! Not, not a society burglar. Oh, it must have been. Dark, swarthy. Definitely the criminal type. Definitely. Well, what were they doing? Arguing outside a jewelry store. I think she was pleading with him not to rob it. Oh, how absolutely fascinating. Maybe we shouldn't tell anybody. I agree. I agree absolutely. Oh, hang up, Imogene. I want to call Sammy. <laughs> Sammy! 
Imogene saw him. The society burglar. Shirley. With Miss Armstrong? He was dressed in evening clothes, but his face betrayed him. The criminal type. What were they doing? He was robbing a jewelry store. And, well, I don't like to say this about Miss Armstrong, Sammy, but she must have been acting as his lookout. I don't believe it. We have to give her the benefit of every doubt, Sammy. Oh, promise me you won't tell a soul. I won't tell a soul, Shirley. Oh, poor Mr. Harvey. When I tell him about it in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, Sammy. How's the world's youngest cynic? You better sit down, Mr. Harvey. Why? Oh, uh, by the way, Sammy, I believe I might have mentioned something about wanting to keep an eye on Miss Armstrong. You sure did, Mr. Harvey. Well, forget the whole thing, Sammy. It was just a misunderstanding. Misunderstanding? Yes, we, uh, we straightened it all out last night. What time last night? Well, fairly early. As a matter of fact, I was home and in bed by 11. Early to bed, you know, Sammy, makes a man healthy, wealthy, I hate and... to do this to you. Do what to me? But it's my duty for the community. What's your duty? Mr. Harvey, Miss Armstrong was seen last night by my operatives. With him. Him? Who? The society burglar. Oh, but that's impossible. I was out with Miss Armstrong last night. Mr. Harvey, didn't you ever hear of a late date? Yeah. Sammy, I, I refuse to believe any of this. Don't even tell me about it. Where were they? He was seen emerging from a jewelry store. Jewelry store? Dressed in white tie and tails and dripping with stolen diamonds. What was Miss Armstrong doing? I can't tell you, Mr. Harvey. I don't believe it myself. S Sammy, I'm, I'm sure this is all a mistake. And, and when Miss Armstrong comes in, she'll clear it up in a minute. Sure she will, Mr. Harvey. We've got to believe in her, Sammy. But on the other hand... Here comes Miss Armstrong, Mr. Harvey. I'll handle this, Sammy. Good morning, Susan. Oh, hello, George. Sammy. Wonderful morning. Wonderful morning, eh? wonder what she meant by that. What did you say, George? Have a good night's rest, Susan? Well, as a matter of fact, I... I didn't sleep too well. Uh-huh. What's the uh-huh for? Susan, think this over very carefully before you answer. You didn't have a date last night. Well, you could call it a date, yes. Uh-huh. With whom? Uh-huh. You. That's not what I meant, and you know it. Well, well, well I, I gotta go to the composing room. You stay right here, Sammy. You wouldn't care to tell me what this is all about, George. Susan, for your own good, I demand an answer. Were you or were you not? Oh, no, not that again. Don't spare my feelings, Susan. This is bigger than both of us. I'll be much happier if you tell me the truth. You're sure? Positive. Last night, did you or did you not? Of course. I, um... I, I had a late date with the, the society burglar, and, uh, and and we held up a jewelry store. No. Yes, and now, if you'll excuse me, I have to melt down some hot wedding rings. Are you happy, Mr. Harvey? Happy, Sammy? I don't think I'll ever be happy again. Ever. <laughs> Back to our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. Irene, as Susan Armstrong, is currently in the throes of a misunderstanding with Fred as George Harvey. This, however, has happened before. Matter of fact, it happens every week. I just can't understand it, Patience. Understand what, Miss Susan? His unreasoning jealousy on George's part. He's accusing me of all sorts of wild things. Um, uh, who started it? I did. Uh-huh. But I've told him time after time that there wasn't any truth in it. I've told him I don't know any society burglar. He refuses to believe me. It's inexcusable. Well, give him another chance, Miss Susan. Go out with him tonight and get things all straightened out. We had them all straightened out last night. George is a difficult case. Well... Good. And if you have any trouble with a society burglar, just send for me. Send for you. I've got a date with Patrolman Mullins. Well, it's nice to know you'll be safe, Patience. Completely safe. There are times when I'd rather be out with a burglar. Give 
give her another chance, Mr. Harvey. Never. Uh, you really think I should, Sammy? Any woman is entitled to one slip, Mr. Harvey. Anyway, I can't really believe it of Miss Armstrong. I can't either. But what about your operatives? Well, they're only human. And on top of that, they're women. It's a bad combination. Well? Go to her, Mr. Harvey. Go to her. Or face the future years of emptiness and regret. One more chance, huh? One more chance. I have complete confidence in Miss Armstrong. So have I, Sammy. So have I. But just in case, Mr. Harvey, I'll have my operatives on the job. Excellent idea, Sammy. Uh, Just in case. Like old times, huh, Susan? Mm, Like old times, George. Double feature... After theater snack at hamburger heaven. You sure you wouldn't go for another hamburger? Oh, no, no. I'm completely filled, George. Well, the sky's the limit, you know. Nothing small time about George Harvey. <laughs> Our reconciliation banquet. Yeah. Uh, Susan, you're completely sure that oh, you now, never... Oh, now, George, I couldn't go through that again. I've never met the society burglar. Want me to sign my name in blood? Well, uh, ketchup will do. It's handier. If we're <laughs> going to start this all over again, George... Uh, I, I believe you, Susan. I believe you implicitly. Well, shall we go? All right. But if you can't get these insanely jealous ideas out of your head... Jealous? Me? Absurd. (laughs) Then we'll consider the subject closed. Once and for all. And if I ever so much as... excuse me. I... Oh. Oh. Oh! That girl. Have we seen her somewhere before? What girl? uh... Oh, I didn't notice. Anyway, Susan, if I ever open up this subject again, you can... Shoot you? Uh, Yes, yes, you can shoot me. There are certain times, George, when it would almost be a pleasure. Shirley, Imogene. I saw them, Shirley, again. Oh, Imogene. You mean Miss Armstrong and the Society Burglar? Not half an hour ago. Oh, Imogene. He wasn't holding up another jury store. He was spending his ill-gotten gains on Miss Armstrong. <gasps> no! I saw them emerging from a swank eating place. And they seemed extremely... I use a charitable word, Shirley. Extremely friendly. Oh, an intrigue. Developing right before our very eyes. Oh, hang up, Imogene. I have to call Sammy. <laughs> Uh, hello? Mr. Harvey, Sammy. Uh, look, Sammy, I don't know what time it is, but I was just nicely asleep. My and... operative couldn't use the phone, Mr. Harvey. She had to wait till her family got to bed. Why? A confidential report, Mr. Harvey. Miss Armstrong was seen again with him. Oh, that's ridiculous. I, I took Susan home early this evening Making and... the smartest nightclub in the city after dining on pheasant under glass. Pheasant under glass? Well, that's impossible. She told me she was too full to eat another hamburger. Well, put yourself in her place, Mr. Harvey. Wouldn't you have said the same? Sammy, I'm going to get dressed and go over to Miss Armstrong's house right now. And if he's still there, I'll... For the benefit of every doubt, Mr. Harvey, uh, maybe he's her long-lost brother. Well, that's very possible. But if he isn't, oh, brother. Tired, she said. Going to bed early. Looked straight at me when she said it. Well, this is where I... Wait a minute. There's a car in front of the house. Two people in it. A man and a... and a woman. This is where we have a showdown once and for all. Come out of there, you. I'm not giving this woman up without a struggle. Why, Mr. Harvey, I didn't know you cared. Patience. And you know Officer Mullins, Mr. Harvey. Uh, Yes, indeed. I I was just passing by. I uh, wanted to say hello. Uh, Hello. Uh, Well, I'll uh, I'll see you again. I don't seem to be getting anywhere fast. wanted to see me, Susan? Oh, sit down, George. Uh, George, you haven't been involved in any accidents lately, have you? Accidents? No. No severe bumps on the head. Uh, Patients told you. Why don't you have a specialist check you over, George? My doctor would be glad to recommend someone. No, thank you. 
But I'm really worried about you. It seems to me, Susan, that some people had better do some worrying about themselves. Meaning what? Nothing. Nothing at all. But from now on, Susan, have a care, that's all. You are being watched. Anyone I know. In order to straighten things out, I'm taking over the job myself. To straighten things out? Uh, George, are you sure you haven't been in an accident lately? <laughs> Duke, how long are we going to wait for that guy to go away? I figure he's waiting for the lights to go out so he can knock over the house himself, Frankie. Dad, what's a few lights in the back of the house? How long's he going to wait? He's been watching the place like a great dame for an hour now. You know, our field is getting overcrowded. Let's go over and talk a deal with him. That's for me. Maybe we can flip for who breaks into the place. Pardon me, friend. Huh? Uh, who are you? Uh, fellow practitioners. My partner and I wish to... Those tools you're carrying. You're, you're crooks. What did you think we were? Rotarians? Now, my partner and I saw you watching the house here. Well and good. Everybody's got to make a living, but we... You were going into that house? Duke, a mind like a steel trap. Honest face, too. But, friend... Which one of you is the society burglar? You know my work? I know your work, all right. I know it a little too well. I don't get it. You get it, all right. But I must say, I thought she had better taste. You understand anything he's saying, Frankie? That's crackpots like this that give our profession a bad name. Ask him the question, Duke. Friend, let's settle it. Who's going in the house? You or us? We'll settle it, all right. We're both going in. All of us? Maybe he thinks this is a square dance. So what do we got to lose? We'll all go in. Come on. Hey, where you going? In the front door. Where do you think? Duke. And all these years, we've been going in the windows. Well, after you, friend. Susan! Shh! What's the matter? You said you wanted to settle it, didn't you? Here, uh, I'll turn the lights on. Friend, how long have you been in this business? Well, isn't it a little late for a call, Joe? Oh, who are your friends, George? Don't play innocent with me, Susan. You know perfectly well who this is. Who is it? Don't look at us, lady. We just came here on business. So you're going to try to brazen it out, are you? You never saw this man before, Susan, eh? The society burglar. Never. A likely story. It sounds very likely to me. George, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Breaking in with these men this hour of the night? I'm waiting for an explanation from you. Would somebody mind explaining it to me? You're denying, Susan, that you've been seen all over town with this man? I most certainly do. Ha! Ah, wait a minute. It's a triangle, Frankie. Yeah, he looks more like a square to me. George here thinks I've been running around with the lady. Right, George? Well, yes. Your wife isn't going to like this, Duke. Please, Frankie. When have I been running around with the lady, George? Well, every night, according to what I hear. Really, George? I refuse to take any part in this ridiculous discussion. Please, lady. Frankie, tell George what I do nights. He works nights. You see? I work nights. You... You weren't at a nightclub with Miss Armstrong last night? I haven't been to a nightclub in years. Can't afford it. They're crooked. I hope you two gentlemen will make allowances for Mr. Harvey. He's just slightly eccentric. But he means well. Don't you, George? Uh, Susan. All straightened out now, George? Susan, It's I... all right, George. We've been through worse than this, I think. Come on, Frankie. Susan, I... I don't know how I could have been foolish enough to think, you know. Are we leaving, Duke? Sure. They'll get together all right. But what about what we came for? What we came for? Oh. Sure, sure. Nah. So we take a loss. Every once in a while, Frankie, you gotta do something for humanity. <laughs> Our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back in just a moment. Say, Susan. Yes, George? I just got a call from police headquarters. They picked up Duke and Frankie. No. My secret passion in jail. I uh, went over that with Sammy. Uh, We finally figured out the... uh, 
mysterious, handsome stranger you were seen with uh, was me. Perfectly natural mistake, of course. <laughs> I'm not laughing, George. Oh. Well, this whole thing has certainly been a good lesson to me, Susan. It really has. This I doubt. No, 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 it has. From now on, no more listening to Sammy, no more suspicions, no more jealousy. You mean that, George? I certainly do. You mean I can go out with anyone I like without making you jealous? Well... Because Elwood Bray's been calling me for weeks. Elwood Bray? Susan, I absolutely forbid you to go anywhere with that... that... Well, of course, if you must, I guess I can't... (laughs) Don't change, George. It's too much of a strain. And besides, I'm so used to you the way you are. You are? Well, uh, anyway, I tried. (laughs) Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Wendell Niles inviting you to join us then.